Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello and welcome to episode 58 of the joy of coding. My name is Mike Conley. We're going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today. It's going to be a great time. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to get down to business. I'm looking forward to it. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to switch to my screen. This is my screen. And I have my agenda here. I'll pump up the font and let you know that if this is your first time watching The Joy of Coding, you should know that there is kind of an agenda. I mean, there's not really a plan and there's no script. There's just kind of a basic roadmap of what I hope to do today. Um, and you can get access to this. There's a link below if you're watching this on Air Mozilla. There's an additional link section where there should be a handy dandy link to this. And as I edit it, if you refresh the page, you should get the most latest, the latest version because this synchronizes through the power of Evernote. Um, I just realized that I'm doing a backup in the background. That's probably going to take some bandwidth, so I've turned that off. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so this is what I want to work on today. First of all, hopefully that uh, my microphone's working, yes, and I'm recording, yeah, all is good. Here's what I want to work on today. Um, I have, uh, my attention's been brought to a regression that I think I introduced not that long ago. I want to try and uh, address that, fix that. I don't think it'll be too big a deal. And after that, going back to that same problem we've been dealing with for a couple of weeks now where I've got these patches to make the initial browser uh, element in a new window remote by default if ETNS is enabled, and I have a bunch of test fallout that I need to keep fixing. I've fixed a bunch of it. There's a, a bit more to fix, uh, and so we'll be going into that. Uh, I should also point out that there is an IRC back channel if you want to talk to me while I'm doing this. If you join hash live hacking, uh, if you click on this link down here in the agenda, that should take you to this page, which will allow you to, like, um, add a nick. In this case, I'll be, like, FlappyBird101, and then hit go. And then, after a couple of seconds, uh, I'll join the channel. I'm in here, and you can talk to me. Hello! And I'm M. Conley, live hacking pipe live hacking you talk to me hello Mike so you can talk to me like that and I get notifications about that uh, so use that um, but please do not abuse that um, let's see so let's get started what is this uh, what is this regression that I introduced so a uh, couple of days ago I think it was last week I fixed a bug where click events were not being dispatched uh, whenever the select pop-up um, is, like when you choose something from a select pop-up like this one here, let me pump up the font again. Uh, uh, I've got like a, an event handler. If you look at the uh, script on this page, here, here's the script. I've got like an event, a bunch of event listeners on the select dropdown, including ones for change, click, input, mouse up, mouse down, key down, key up, key press, etc. And uh, before the patch landed, whenever you'd click on one of these options, we wouldn't get any of the uh, click events. Uh, we wouldn't get them on the select after the uh, the change had occurred. Now we do. We have the click events. But the problem is that in some cases, like for example, if I'm in Bugzilla and I like try and uh, uh, you know set the review flag on something. So let's let's find a patch where I can uh, set a review flag. Uh, let's see. Um, well, let's go to the blocking one here. Um, who, I, I marked this blocking this bug. So if I go to this bug, and I try and uh, set the review flag on this test case, so I bring up this, uh, this select dropdown, I choose the question mark. Now the, uh, the input normally should be focused, but it's not. The focus is shifted so that it goes back here. And I think the reason for that is because I used, if we look at the code I added, I used something called the uh, DOM Windows Utils to synthesize the mouse down and mouse up event on the, uh, on the select input. And what actually is happening is it's almost like the user is clicking on it um, after, uh, after, the selection has occurred, and we don't want that because it's possible that the 
user has uh, the the page has some script to change the focus, and we don't want to have to like have created a click here. Um, so what I'm thinking instead of using DWU, uh, the DOM Windows utils, is to just dispatch. I'm gonna, I'm going to try it anyways. Just dispatch mouse down and mouse up properly. Um, so let's let's give that a shot. I've got um, I've actually got my other like window open patches on top of this, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna work on top of them for now, and I can rebase my change later. Um, so in the same way that we create these input and change events, I'm gonna try and create uh, some mouse down, mouse up, and uh, mouse down and mouse out and mouse click event. Uh, so let's let's try that. Um, let's see, mouse event. I'm pretty sure that there is a an example that I can use. Um, uh, mouse event. Create event. Mouse events. I don't think that's exactly what I want. I want to like. Um, mouse up. Is there like a way of synthesizing a mouse up? There, I know there is, I just need to like find the right way of creating the mouse up event. Uh, init event. Uh, document init event. Let's search create event. Nope, didn't want to search them. Init event. We don't want to use that. We want to use the uh, non-deprecated creating and triggering events. Here's what we want. New mouse event. This is how you do it. You create a mouse event like this. So uh, let's see. Let const uh, mouse events equals to mouse down, mouse up, click. Whoops. And then for let uh, event name of mouse events, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, event mouse event equals new. Uh, we're going to create a Win dot mouse event of type event name, and then we're going to say that the uh, view is win bubbles. It should bubble. Cancelable should be false. Mouse down, mouse up, event, and then click. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dispatch that event on the document, uh, on the select element. Uh, this dot element dot dispatch event, uh, mouse event. So that will do that instead of these uh, mouse down, mouse up things. And the reason we didn't need click event before is whenever you create a mouse down and mouse up if it's on the same element gecko interprets that as a click so it'll automatically dispatch a click event but because we are not using dom window utils in this case uh, we have to do it ourselves mouse down mouse up and then click so I think that'll do let's see if that works I'm going to build uh, faster Uh, and what's a good test case? Um, well, I guess I can use the Bugzilla one. Assuming I have Bugzilla, uh, my credentials, we can try that. Some bad scaling, but that's what you get with the debug build. All right, come on now, hurry up, hurry up, debug build. All right. OK. 
Good. All right. Um, so where am I going? Let's go to the uh, the same place we went to before. Let's go to um, this attachment. Let's see if we can view the attachment details and uh, try and edit them. Let's see if this user account, if I have one, and let's see if we have the rights to try and edit. Come on. Come on, Mr. Miss Debug Build, let's do this. Do I have? Wait, I don't have the ability. I don't have the ability. Um, so what I might want to do is create a test case instead. So let's just quickly see what they do here with Bugzilla. Um, is there like an event listener or something? There's a change event listener, and I'll bet like change suggestions review add menu items context menu on change toggle request e field so let's, let's take a look at that toggle request e field Shows or hides request e field, and then what does it do? It focuses it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple test case. Um, for the yeah, here we're going to attach a file. Um, Add an input. Uh, ID equals uh, text input. Uh, and then we're going to say on change document that get element by ID text input focus. Test case, manual test case is what we'll call it. Um, and I have to actually change the MIME type because otherwise it will not load as an HTML document. Okay. So I should have a manual test case here. So that doesn't focus the input, but I'll bet you if I open this in a non etns window, a change, yeah, that's, that's what we want. This is the behavior we want and the behavior we're not getting. So now if I load this attachment where we did our change, let's see if it fixes it. Hey, all right, we fixed it. And we should also be getting our... Uh, our events being fired. So let's just check that out. And if that works, well, then I will uh, submit this patch for review. I'll probably need to run some tests on it as well. Um, so. Mouse up, mouse up, click. Mouse down, mouse up, click. That's right. Good, good, good. All right, we're going to keep that. That change is going to work out, I think. Uh, let's run some tests real quick. I added some tests for that under, what is it, uh, browser select pop-up. So let's make sure these tests still pass. Um... Um, okay, test browser base content test general browser select pop up. Here, let me bump up the font a little and bring up the bottom of my screen so you can see. All right, so I'm saying run the browser select pop up test.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Test, 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 and what do we say? How are we doing? Did we pass the tests? We're about to find out. Some unexpected fails. Oh. So cancellation property should match. I guess uh, I got, let's see, we expect mouse down, mouse up. We expect these to be cancelable. Mouse down, mouse up, and click to be cancelable. I see. So, that should be true, not false. So, we'll build it faster. We'll run the test one more time. These should all pass, and then we will submit it for review. And that's why we write tests. Hey, what happened? Good question. Ah, uh, so... Uh, if that one's in the bag, if we knock that regression in, uh, out, then uh, we're going to need to make sure that this gets uplifted. Um, well, the, the patch that it depends on also needs to be uplifted. So both of these patches need to be uplifted. One kind of depends on the other. Go, 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 go. <laughs> what you say, did you pass, 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 pass? Yay, everything passed. I think we're in good shape. So let's get ready to commit this. Um, this is bug one, two, seven, five, three, eight, four. Um, okay. Commit. Oh, let's take a look at the diff real quick. Just to make sure we know what we're changing here. We're not putting any garbage in. Yeah, that looks fine. Commit. M bug. Whoops. 1275384 is what we need to call it. Actually, yeah, bug. 1275384275384. Uh, you uh, dispatch mouse down, mouse up, and click events manually on select for E10S instead of using DOM window utils are Felipe. I should actually go into more detail. Apparently some ESLint thing I think I've got my ESLint a little screwed up. Uh, we were using NSI DOM window utils to send mouse down uh, and m mouse up events to the select input after the drop down, after a selection was made. In E10S mode, but doing so causes um, focus to be pulled um, causes focus to be pulled to the select if the 
any input or change event handlers tried to shift focus. Pull back to the select. For example, the reviewer input on Bugzilla was having its focus stolen after setting the review flag to which was how this bug was discovered. Okay, so let's push that up. Uh, our push C when you're, you're just pushing a single review, uh, single revision, and you've got like a stack of review of revisions that are not yet in the tree. Uh, the Moz review stuff will attempt to push them all, so you have to use dash C to push just a single one. Um, we'll push that up for review. Okay, so do we want to, let's take a look at the review request. Publish. I'm happy with it. Okay. So that's done. We did this. Um, I didn't actually need to take any notes. Patch is posted. Let's see what Felipe thinks. Philippe. Sorry, Philippe. I think it's pronounced Philippe, not Felipe. So current state is needs review or wait blocked on review. Blocked on review. Okay. Uh, bookmark it. Select focus. I'm actually going to rebase that. Um, our select focus dest. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do HG update 348492 and uh, rebase select focus destination on central. Whoops, I had to tell it that select focus is a revision with dash R. Uh, let's take a look at these failing tests now. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. What happened? About to sneeze again? I can't do my work! Okay, I'm alright. I'm alright. It's just allergy season. We're okay. Um... Uh, so let's take a look at these failing tests. They are... I, I pushed a patch to try try machines and a bunch of them failed a bunch of my tests failed uh, some of them I think I've fixed like these ones I think I figured out what's going on here so these BC6s are fixed now the C3 for Linux I'm starting with Linux 64 debug just because like I've got in case rut row what just happened now I, I think I kicked I kicked something and like everything went orange for a second. I have a feeling um, I accidentally changed the power settings on uh, on the camera. Whoops. Let me just change the zoom on this camera so that you don't have like a piece of 
Hold up. Hold up. One second. One moment. One moment. Whoop. There. I think that's a little bit better. Um, I don't know what happened there. I think I accidentally like shut off the power bar under my feet. Anyway, um, so here's some oh, just failing tests. These C3s uh, were uh, intermittent, so don't worry about it. This DT3, I don't know. Um, it doesn't look like there are any open intermittents on them, so it's possible that this is a thing that I broke. Um, that's one I, I want to look at. Uh, I actually have a uh, Linux machine uh, that I'm signed into on another. It's it's somewhere else in the office that has RR installed and everything. RR, if you're unfamiliar with it, hang on, let me bring this terminal up. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's a record and replay debugger that I had to use recently, and it was awesome. So uh, I'm doing it on this machine called Hawkman. That's why uh, I'm signed into it. Uh, just in the event that I need to use RR. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you should be able to. I can even bring that down a little more. Boop. Hawkman. So I'm signed into Hawkman. And let's see what else we got here. DT3. It says it fails. I'm going to do some retriggers just in case. But I have a feeling that this is a... Failure that I introduced, so maybe we could take a look at these. DevTools Client Web Audio Editor. I don't know why I would have caused that to break, but we can find out. Um, this is in non e 10 s mode. Um, and it's a monkey test DT3 DevTools Client Web Audio Editor. So what I'm going to do is um, run all of the DevTools client uh, web audio editor tests uh, but with ETNS disabled and see if I'm able to reproduce the bug or reproduce the failure. There's also a couple over here we can take a look at um, yeah, some kind of unexpected global browser, browser private browsing, non-browser that's worth looking at, some kind of leak And then add-on watcher, look at that. And then browser content URL annotation, some failure there. And then some test timeouts. Not great. But hopefully fixing some of these might address some of the other ones that are over here that are failing on OS X. So for example, um, yeah, this one, pla plugin crash report non-determinism. That's interesting. Plugin is null. That one I thought I've dealt with before. Let's. While we're waiting for the other one to finish up, um, in the background. Test timed out. Plugin is null. I seem to recall. Plugin get. It's complaining because of this. Prepare plugin is being called on the browser. Oh, I have a feeling I know why. We open a new window. I know why. We need to do this. Crash URL. Because it's possible that the first thing that we get a load about is actually about the about blank that loads in that first window. I need to do the same thing down here. Crash URL. And I can try and prove that. That's actually good. I mean, we may have just addressed one. Uh, meanwhile, there's this test running in the background. I'm not seeing any failures just yet. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these two fixes and see if I'm able to reproduce this failure. Um, thing is, I don't know if I was able to reproduce it locally 
uh, using a debug build, but we'll try mozconfig, uh, mock, mokey test, and then what was the path browser base content test plugin, browser plugin crash report non determinism. And that's in E10S mode, and we'll see if this fails. If it does, and I hope it does, then we'll try my fix, and if that works, well, then we'll commit it and move on. What's happening here? Are right, we passing or what? Maybe we're. Did we pass? <laughs> I can't even tell. Plugin is null. Okay, so we hit the failure. Good. Okay, we did. We failed. Great. That's good news. Now let's uh, put our fix back and try the test again. Come on. I don't think so. What, what, what happened? Hmm. I don't know if anyone can hear the sounds that I was playing, but I can't hear them. Uh, did this get shut down somehow? Soundflower. What happened? There it is. I have a feeling when I kicked this power bar, I ended up resetting a bunch of USB devices. I'm just glad you can still see and hear me. I'm glad that didn't just like completely didn't kill the uh, kill the feed. Are we going to run this test or what? Oh, there we go. I had to trigger it. It's me, Mario! So that's good. We saw what we wanted there. Oh, yeah. And... See, how do we do? How do we do? What's hey? Hi That's right! Seven tests passed. Zero failed. How's it going, you fellas out there? You wanna say hello to the world? Come on in. Hey everyone, this is uh, Ryan Feely. He, the camera's right here. You, you can see a preview of your face. Say hello to everybody. Hi everybody. That's Ryan Feely, he's one of our brilliant UX designers. How's it going? This is, you want to sit in your... Oh, okay, okay. All right, cool. Thanks for venting the room, though. It's getting warm in here. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, okay, so that's good. We got our test to pass. So I think that fixes this particular case. I got a feeling a lot of these test failures are this. So what's happening is the test opens a window, and we make it so that the initial browser in E10S mode 
is remote. And if it is remote, whenever we uh, load that initial browser, it loads the about blank document right away. And I think in single process mode, there is um, a greater probability that by the time the parent requests a new page to be loaded, that the about blank has not yet loaded. And then the parent has a, uh, the single process case where we essentially cancel the about blank load and tell it to go somewhere else. But in multi-process mode, I think there is less opportunity or there's a le less of a likelihood that the about blank will be canceled. So that first about blank fires a load event, which some of our tests um, don't expect. So they'll, uh, like when you open a window and you load a URI and you say uh, yield on browser loaded, it's expecting that, okay, well, we're going to load the thing I just asked to load URI. But um, all that browser loaded is doing is waiting for a load event. And if that browser window fires a load event for the about blank, that's not the one we expect. Now, thankfully, browser loaded takes an argument that allows us to check the URL of what got loaded. So I think we just need to be more precise here and always check the, uh, the thing that we expect to load. And I think that takes care of this particular case, uh, non-determinism. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and then I've got some other failures over here. These are unrelated uh, to plugins, but let's check them out. Meanwhile, how's our Lin how's Hawkman doing? Hawkman ran without a problem. No problems there. Now. Whenever I ran it, was I supposed to run it with ETNS enabled or disabled? I was supposed to run it with it disabled. And did I? I did run it with it disabled. Hmm. Maybe if I run it directly, I can do a run until failure to try and smoke it out. Uh, okay, and then what else we got here? I'm just kind of poking at random oranges here. Um, so we've got a fix for, um, whoops. Apparently that's not a real. Oh, whoops. I doubled that path. I shouldn't have. It should be just this. Okay, so what change did we make? Um, we just made this test not fail. Okay, so I'll come at that. Make browser plugin crash report non determinism not fail. Don't need to be any more precise than that for now. Um, so that's that one. So next one, let's take a look at one of these. This is uh, browser bug 495058. I don't even know what that is, um, but it fails in ETNS mode. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it to fail. Moz config. Uh, mock Moki test. Run that test. Runs a test. So the test is just sitting here. This and was the symptom of the failure timeout? Yes, test timed out. So I think that's what's happening here is the test is timing out. Good. Good. So we have our failure. We have the thing going wrong. So what is this test? That's the first question is like what is this test trying to do? And how could making the initial browser remote affect it? Okay, so thankfully this test is short. 
tests that the right elements of a tab are focused when it is torn out into its own window. So for each URI, we add a tab, and then we load the URI, and then we replace the tab with the window, and then we wait for the event, the load event on the window. Through the browser, we'll handle the ETNS case in the next block. So for one of these, we are waiting for an event. Tab linked browser, We're waiting for a moz after paint inside the content. And we're also waiting for delayed startup finish. Win replace tab with window. Hmm. So let's get some order of events here. Um, Info loading tab with URI and then info replacing tab with window and then info waiting for load event on new window and then uh, delayed start. I'm going to add some. Uh, info got delayed startup. These are really sloppy. Info got content painted. And then closing window. Info setting up was after paint listener for content. And then I'll also add a browser.js. I think I already do this, but um, in here, these, uh, maybe flipping remoteness of initial browser. Okay, so let's um, build faster for the change we made to the front end. Okay, so we load a tab and we replace it with a window. Is that where we're at? Did we? Oh, we failed. What did we fail for? Exception thrown, syntax error. It's a syntax error. Ugh. Syntax error missing after element list in the test number 39. Oh, shoot. 39, what I do here? Ah. Whoops. Put a semicolon there. It's a pain. I should do an opt build. That way, uh, Hey, hey, we got our test time out on Hawkman. That's good. Um, we should figure out what 
is going on there. We'll we'll see if uh, let's let's continue investigating this uh, window opening one, and then we'll go back to Hawkman. Well, they're all window opening bugs, but let's this like one I was dealing with here on OSX's side. Robustness marked as unsupported. What? I probably need to focus the window. That's what you're waiting for, isn't it? There we go. Opens a window. Okay. Got delayed startup. We're not getting... We set up the Moz after paint listener for content, then we flip the remoteness. That is why we have a problem here. Okay. So we set the event listener for Moz after paint for the remoteness flip. Wait for load... Um, if win.g multi process browser yield browser test utils wait for event win or g browser I think there's an event Remoteness. Tab remoteness change on the tab. Tab. Okay, I think that'll fix it. I'll have to clean that up in a second. So what could be going on with Hawkman? We've got this test timeout. I, I guess I better figure out where the timeout is occurring. It's a pain in the butt because I don't know how long it took for Hawkman to run that test for it to figure out that things were going wrong. No? Huh. Okay, flip remoteness initial browser, flipping remoteness. Then do we flip it again? What? Is that what's happening? Oh, we might not oh, wait for. Maybe that happens too soon. Setting up Moz after paint listener. So we start enter test bound loading tab with URI about blank, replace tab with window waiting for load event on the new window. Remoteness flip is done. We never get to here. Tab remoteness change. What? Now I don't understand. 
Is it a race? Is it sometimes that the initial browser? Oh man, it is warm here. I'm gonna open a wind open the door. Get a little ventilation. What's going on? Open remoteness of initial browser. Replace the tab with a window. Waiting for load event on the new tab. Flipping remoteness. Got delayed startup. Do we ever, do we never set the, we never get here. Setting up Moz after paint. What? Oh, here we go. Setting up Moz after paint. And then we flip remoteness. Why do we flip remoteness the second time? Setting up miles after paint, and then we flip remoteness again. I think we need to understand why that second flipping of remoteness is occurring. Oh, and maybe it's not even flipping remoteness. Maybe that. Let's check that out. I'll run it again. Meanwhile, Hawkman. How long did it take for us to... Oh, not long. I think it was just... Excuse me, two runs. And then... Um, and then it failed. That's good. So the next thing after... Uh, we should take a look at this... Uh, browser wa destroy node failure. Meanwhile. Hey, what happened? Come on, come on. Hurry up. Here we go. Shouldn't have played that one yet. I should play that whenever I succeed. Mamma mia! Come on. Okay, so we're stuck. Setting up the Moz Afterpaint listener for content. Got to late start. I wonder if it's possible that the Moz Afterpaint has already fired at that point. If I come through the browser element, we'll handle the ETNS case in the next block. I'm going to undo all my changes in here. Wait for event load. So what we're doing is we're waiting for Moz after paint to bubble up through the shims. Content is painted. Wait for event.
wait for a load to occur. Maybe we should make this DOM content loaded. I wonder if that'll help. That's just a guess. I don't know if that'll help. Is that going to pass? Nope. Why not? Okay. I'm going to put that one aside for a second just to check on Hawkman. Hawkman is timing out as we wanted. So we're in the timed out state. So what we might want to do is look at the source code real quick. I'm just going to halt on the uh, on this other one for just a quick second. And the nodes are no longer stored internally in the tool that the graph is updated probably and that's selecting soon to be dead node clears the inspector. So I guess what I want to do is I'm going to edit this file and figure out where the hang is occurring, like where where we're waiting. Um, clicking on graph node. Done clicking on graph node. And then Waiting on destruction and graph re render info destruction and graph re render done. Doing teardown. Teardown is done. And nothing in here creates a window. That's the other thing. Which makes me wonder how much of this, oh, and here's one info, knitting web audio editor. Whoops. Web audio editor knitted. So we'll run that. And then let's go back here. So what I'm thinking along with, um, debugging the way I am is I'm going to do an opt build because it's taking forever to run some of these tests um, and I wonder if uh, I can speed things up by doing an opt build hey Barrett has joined IRC hello Barrett okay so let me refresh my memory on the load event and DOM content loaded um, DOM content loaded. What, uh. Hello? Hello? What's wrong with my browser? DOM content loaded. DOM 
um, content loaded. Fired when the initial HTML document has been completely loaded and parsed without waiting for any of the other stuff. Uh, load should only be used to detect a fully loaded page. It is incredibly popular mistake to use load where DOM content loaded would be much more appropriate. Uh, okay. Pauses parsing of the DOM. There's also plenty of general purpose and standalone libraries who offer cross browser methods to detect the DOM is ready. Okay, so DOM content loaded happens first. So by the time that we hear the load event on the window, DOM content loaded should already have run. Um, so let's see. Waiting for load event. Got load event. So in between here, we should uh, make the initial browser remote. And then uh, setting up Moz after paint listener. Browser delayed startup. OK, so and what else I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Moz after paint listener inside browser child. Whoops. Browser child.js, which is a frame script it's loaded in every remote browser. Uh, add event listener Oz after paint. We'll just do it once. Remove. I will call it on paint. Remove event listener Oz after paint on paint. Dump content painted. Okay. So, build faster. OK, run the test. Run the test. It's me, Mario. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. I do not like waiting for my machine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Go, 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 go. This is taking forever. I don't like waiting for my machine. No! Don't no! waiting. got there I think one of the reasons why things have slowed down so much is because I started a build in the background to try and speed things up like a faster build so 
maybe this is just a sunk cost. It's for the best. Okay, so I think we're in the state where we wanted to be in. So start the test, wait for the load event, flip the remoteness of the browser, got the load event, then we set up the Moz after paint listener, then content is painted. We see that content is painted. That's interesting. We're saying that content is painted after we set up the Moz after paint listener. So what's going wrong? That's a very interesting result. Um, yield content painted. Yield delayed startup. Waiting on content paint. Waiting on delayed startup now. OK. Let's try that again. Again, again, again. Uh, I'm just reading some feedback from Felipe on the patch that we posted not that long ago. And he says that the patch looks good, but he wants Smog to take a look at it just to make sure that the difference in behavior is what is expected. Brenny wants to know, Barrett wants to know if I got a soundboard. Actually, no, Barrett. What I've got here is a, um, this is Wacky Morning DJ. This is an app I wrote, uh, a very simple web app. If you check out, I think it's like Joy of Coding episode 16, uh, I talk about how it works. Basically, I'm running a local web server and using WebSockets uh, to like serve up some UI to the web server in uh, in my browser. So like, for example, let me see here. I can show you the UI on my phone because here, well, hang on, no, I'll just disconnect it. So this is, this is the uh, browser. I'm running, uh, I'm running, showing the UI here. I browse to my local server, and then when I click one of these, uh, what happens is uh, WebSocket Connection sends a, uh, a message to the server that's running on my local machine, which calls out to uh, the OSX to play the sound. Um, and all the code is open source. Wacky Morning DJ, I've put it up on GitHub. You can find it on my GitHub, if that is a thing that interests you. I don't include all of the sounds, because the licensing... Um, I think that there's a little gray zone there in terms of whether or not I can actually include the sounds. But uh, Mamma mia. Uh, the whole functionality is you just kind of drop in some sounds in a JSON file and uh, and you can have yourself a soundboard, which is pretty cool. And you can control it from anything. I can control it from my phone if I wanted. See, check it out. Um, what's the IP address of my machine? 10.242. It's a fully responsive web app, except that I'm not on the same network, so that's not going to work. Oh, well. Am I on the guest network? Is that why? Yes, I'm on the guest network. That's why. OK, so now I've connected to the actual network network. And so you can see the UI is now on my phone. I can also, and then over here on the other one, Wacky Morning DJ is probably something I'm very I'm very proud of Wacky Morning DJ. Um, the code is not amazing, but the uh, but uh, okay we've we've got our waiting on content paint content painted. So we set up the Moz after paint listener. We're waiting on content paint. I would expect that after that, after we waiting like. We should have gotten waiting on delayed startup now, but we never get there, even though content painted. So what's the deal? Um, something is going wrong here with the 
setting up of the Moz After Paint listener. Are the shims broken in this case? Hmm. What what could we do? Um, I could do this content task dot spawn tab dot linked browser return new promise that resolves uh, return um, add event listener moz after paint on paint function on paint move event listener moz after paint on paint resolve so I could try that so if that's the content painted event, will that make you happy? Is that what you want? So yes, Barrett says, yes, you have a soundboard. It's true, I, bu I built one. I built it. And yeah, the source code is at here, um, wacky morning DJ. A quick and dirty Node.js soundboard. I'll put that in IRC. All right. <laughs> Come on now. Show yourself. In the meantime, how's Hawkman doing? Hawkman timed out. What did it time out doing? Test timed out while what were we doing? We were... God event. Done clicking on... Waiting on destruction and graph re-render. That's what we were waiting to do. We were waiting on destruction and graph re-render. So something in there is failing. We need to find out what. What? So the first thing is determining whether or not it's destruction or graph re-render and not one or the other. Let's get it out of the superposition. Let's collapse the waveform. What are you? This test, come on. It's one over here. How you doing? And then a new tab. Yep. Anything? Content painted. Setting up Moz after paint listener. Waiting on content paint. Content painted. That should have been enough. That should have been enough. What's happening? <sighs> Fine, I'll add. Content script is adding Moz after paint. Listener. Dump. Content script, or I should say content task. Content task. So Moz after paint. Do it again. And then for Hawkman, let's go back to Hawkman for a second. Uh, we're going to make it so that we make it clear. Um, waiting on destruction and graph re-render. Like that's... One of these is failing. Wait for graph re-rendered or destroyed. 
So same as before, I'm going to do this sort of like sloppy destroyed uh, dot then uh, dump destroyed. And then over here, dot then dump uh, graph re rendered. Really hacky. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry. And then we'll run the test again over here. Meanwhile, back on this machine, give priority to the Browser we just opened. Come on, I want to solve this mystery. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it. Do it. I wonder how my opt build is going because this is taking five ever. <laughs> Mario! I don't think so! I can't do my work! I can't do my work! I can't do my work! Come on, hurry up. I should probably not put so much load on the, uh, on my machine, but I can't help it. Normally it's so sp zippy and speedy. Am I dropping frames or anything? I'll bet OBS is taking like most of my CPU. Oh well. What's going on here? Did we... Okay, content pa content task is adding Moz after paint listener. So it adds it. It just, we never receive it. That's so interesting. Is the browser... What is going on? That's so interesting. We add the Moz After Paint listener, and the browser child sees a Moz After Paint. But maybe it's a different Moz After Paint. Like maybe it's for a, the the background tab that we're seeing it. Except it can't be because we only fire it once. We remove it after. Hmm. That is a mystery. That I do not get. Got load events, setting up the Moz after paint listener, waiting on content paint. Then we say that the content task is adding Moz after paint listener, and then we never resolve the promise for some reason. Moz after. Did I spell it right? Moz after paint. Add event listener. Moz after paint. Remove event listener. Moz after paint. All of this looks okay to me. We run this, but we never get into here. What could it be? The linked browser should be painting. Let's do a sanity test. Um, sanity test. 
waiting for um, paint on browser with outer window outer ID uh, tab dot linked browser dot outer window ID that's a number that uh, we can refer to in here um, outer window ID for window with outer window ID once again we will run this test but first we have to run faster meanwhile how's that build going whoops see daisy still building still compiling where are we at 20 minutes in I think we're almost done actually this build but by the time I you know what I'm gonna cancel it because by the time it matters this stream is gonna be over so I didn't my my gamble did not pay off so I've canceled the build to speed up my machine hopefully free up some memory speed up the machine Come on now, come on, come on. Give me some news. Yeah, this is behaving slightly faster now. I'm not building. Maybe that's for the best. Okay. So that's the outer window ID. And, oh, uh, we hadn't sent it up yet. But I could check 655. 655. Can I like ah, I gotta like turn on the dev tools remote debugging stuff so I can check the outer window ID of this browser. Make sure that I'm pointing at the right one. Oh the suspense is killing me. Remote debugging, browser and chrome debugging. Okay. G browser selected browser ah why do I have a G browser selected browser outer window ID two one four seven four eight three six five five two one four that was the one right two one four flipping sanity test waiting on content and then Two one four seven four eight three six five five was the one. That is the one. That is the one that painted. What the hell? So the right one painted. This thing sees the Moz after paint event handler fire. But the content task does not. Why? What if you wait for it on the capturing phase? Is it possible that something is canceling the event? Whoops, didn't need to build, but whatever. Meanwhile, Hawkman failed again. And apparently the failure occurred. Test timed out because what? Waiting on destruction and graph re-render. We don't seem to get either. We don't seem to get either the destruction or the graph. Doing teardown, destroying the web audio render. Teardown is done. 
Gra destroyed graph re-rendered. So that's supposed to work, but neither is working in this case. We're getting neither the neither of the events that we care about for Hawkman. Destroyed is fired where? Get N G audio nodes remove. What is N? Get N and then wait for graph rendered. What is that? Panel win. Panel win. I wonder if pan what is panel win? Panel win equals panel. Yield init web audio editor. Maybe we should look and see what that does. Meanwhile, back over here. So now we're listening for paint and the capture phase. And nothing. Nothing. What in the hell? What in the hell? All right. I think I'm going to have to cap this episode here. I got a big mystery on my hands, but I also have to give up this room because I think some other people want it. And I have only got it booked until two minutes from now. So I'm going to have to cap it here. Thank you so much for watching episode 58 of The Joy of Coding. I hope it was beneficial. I hope it was interesting. Um, and, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. I'm Mike Conley. You've been the best. Take care now. Bye-bye. The Joy of Coding. See ya.